You say you want to become a public speaker. Well, today we're going to talk about the four main categories of public speakers and help you decide which one is best for you. Stick around. <laughs> Welcome. My name is Christine Harper. And I'm Ernie Davis. And we're here from Powerhouse, Powerhouse Motivations. Motivations. We're going to talk about the main categories of public speakers. There are four. Those who want to inform, persuade, entertain, or inspire. The first one, the informative speaker, we all think we're familiar with that because we've all had teachers and teachers are there to inform. Who's your favorite informative speaker, Mr. Davis? Who's my favorite informative speaker? And you said that, Christine, you took me all the way back to seventh grade science, and I can't remember who my seventh grade science teacher was, but I can tell you, I did not enjoy the class. I'm glad it's over, but I, and she was most likely some little lady who, who walked to the front of the room and hit on the board, and she was very monotone and very dull, and it gave me a, a, dis, a dislike for science. And so you're probably going to be you're probably, you're, you're going to be amazed to hear that one of my most favorite one of my most favorite informative speakers is a, a developmental biologist, a guy by the name of Dr. Bruce Lipton. Dr. Bruce Lipton, he's an awesome guy. He's about 75 years old. He's probably one of the most exciting and informative speakers that you will ever see. And for a guy who's 75, he has a wealth of knowledge. You know, I think it's it, it, it's important that we understand that you know. For an informative speaker, because you gave us four types, and I want to make sure I remember them, because you said informative speakers, persuasive speakers, entertaining speakers, and inspirational speakers. And all of these speakers can be motivated, be motivating or motivational. Mm -hmm. But the informative speaker, the thing that's different about the informative speaker is that their speech, the purpose of their speech is to give you a better awareness or better understanding of their subject matter so that you can utilize that for some purpose. You know, and so recently I'm listening to Dr. Bruce Lipton, 75-year-old guy, you know, background, UVA, Stanford Medicine, Penn State, and he's given one of the most exciting presentations that I've ever heard from a developmental biologist, from a scientist, from a professor. And it's so good. And just by listening to it, you know, I learned that stress has a negative impact on the immune system. And it was important because right now we're dealing with a pandemic. You know, we're, 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 hopefully we're getting over the pan, a pandemic, the coronavirus pandemic. And he said something that was so enlightening. He said that stress shuts off your immune system. And he started talking about all the stress that's currently going on in the world, how the news reports have people stressed. And he said, what happens is that weakens your immune system and it makes it easier for your body to succumb or to get sick or to become diseased. And I found that so, so amazing. You know, he started to go from being informative to almost being, almost being persuasive. You know, he, he started to persuade me just a little bit. They're like, wow. That's interesting. You said a couple of things there. Number one, the seventh grade science teacher, you said, turn me off. I started not to like science. Mm -hmm. And then you share with me that your favorite informative speaker is a scientist. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's, so, it's amazing. <laughs> it can happen. It's in the delivery. It wasn't so much in the yeah. content. It was right. in the delivery that, that the person excited you and was able to ignite something within you to learn more about that topic. You're, you're exactly right. It was definitely his delivery because he's not a monotone speaker. He's not the speaker who just stands in one spot and speaks. You know, he, he, he sometimes, occasionally, he speaks faster. And he understands mm -hmm. because he, he's had coaching. And I learned this. I don't know why no one ever tells us that the, the greatest speakers, the best speakers, always work with coaches. But he, when he wants to really get your adrenaline going, and I guess being a biologist, he's good at this, he speaks a little bit faster. And then when he wants to capture your attention, he slows it down a little bit. And he starts to delivering good facts and he always uses good PowerPoint stories and quotes. It's awesome. It's awesome. And it makes him extremely effective. Yes. Yes. Now the second type of speaker that we mentioned is the persuasive speaker. Mm. And this one we've all come in contact also. If you've ever purchased a car, mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you've ever had the occasion to go into an appliance store, mm. Mm -hmm. The guy that's standing there 
is really trying to persuade you to yeah. buy a particular product. Yeah, they're definitely trying to persuade you because yeah. I, I think on the only thing they're doing, they're striving to change your attitude, your thoughts, and your opinions in regards to whatever they're trying to convince you to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting. One of the, <laughs> the best persuasive speakers that I've ever come in contact with are the ones on that home shopping network. Ah. They can get me to buy stuff that I don't even think I need. Never had a thought about being in the backyard barbecuing and, and uh, getting a bug zapper. Uh -huh. But you watch that home shopping network long enough and those hosts have you believing that mm -hmm. this is the product you need to have to make your life perfect. Now, Christine, I got to tell you something, because recently I was watching the Home Shopping Network and I saw the lady on there. I don't know if you ever seen that show Shark Tank, but Shark Tank's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And Barbara, she's on that show. And you're right. They're extremely good. They're extremely persuasive. You know, she had me. She, she almost persuaded me to buy some items. That, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, who would I even give these items to if I bought them? I don't have any. I don't have anybody to give them to if I bought them because, it, you know, they're. They, they were items. I was like, maybe I can give it to my mom. But you're, you're, you're so right. You're so right. You know, and I think once again, a lot of people, they start to believe that, hey, if I can get good, maybe I'll get on one of these shows and then I'll work with like a coach. You know, but what I learned is that these, some of these guys, you know, when it comes to like Barbara, you know, who's on Shark Tank or it comes to a, a guy like Dr. Bruce Lipton, they always get coaching. They mm -hmm. always learn that art up front either the art of being persuasive in sales and through their pre presentations or through their delivery of informative speech, speaking. They learn a core piece that is really, that they really identify with and then they get coaching to help mm -hmm. them get better mm -hmm. at what it is they think they're already good at. So yeah. no matter how good you think you are, you can always get better by yeah. using a coach. Yeah. You definitely so what's that can. third type of speaker? Ah, the entertainer. Yeah, the entertainer. Okay. The entertainer is more than the actor, okay? Mm -hmm. The entertainer is not necessarily a, com a stand-up comedian. Mm -hmm. The entertainer is somebody who makes sure you're having fun while you're listening to what they're saying. Yeah. Tell me about your favorite entertainer. So I, I'm going to tell you this because, you, you know, you, you got it right. Because usually when I think when we think entertaining, we always think about jokes and laughs and, and stuff like that. But it's just not true. The entertaining speaker's job is to make sure that you're entertaining, to keep you engaged, to keep you watching or listening. And they may, you know, they may not tell you anything new or anything that you disagree with. They may not even persuade you to anything. You know, recently I'm watching a guy, Stephen A. Smith. And Stephen A. Smith, he's from your part of town up there in New yes. York. And I think everybody's probably seen Stephen A. Smith on ESPN. And this guy, he, he is awesome at what he does. But, you know, some, one of the things about the entertainer speaker is they may not really believe everything that they say. It's almost as if they're just putting on a show. You know, I listened to him one day, he's talking about a football player. The next day, he's talking about another football player. One day, he's wearing a football player's jersey. And so sometimes you're like, wow. You know, people just watch for hours and hours and mm -hmm. hours. And you know, one of the things that I think that makes the entertaining speaker good is that they know what keeps their audience engaged. They know how to stir up the pot a little bit. I used to call it stirring the pot. They know how to add in just a little bit of controversy. You know, I'm watching, I remember, I'll never forget, back in 2014, this guy, Steve Smith, Stephen A. Smith, you know, he decided to speak out on domestic violence. And you know, when he spoke out on that, he had my ears because mm -hmm. I, was, I, was, I was a kid who grew up in domestic violence. My, my house was full of domestic violence. And so he has the nerve. He said, he said something <laughs> that it made me smile because I agreed with it. But it got him kicked off of the show. But not only did it kick, get him kicked off of the show, it also got him rehired with a pay raise. Because mm. he, sometimes females have to make sure they aren't being provoked. They aren't provoking. Being, they aren't provoking domestic violence. Now, we're not going to talk about that today, but I just thought it was, it's amazing when you think about what are these speakers doing that makes them extremely successful. And when I think about this guy, Steve Smith, the guy's loud, he's controversial, he's very opinionated, and he's willing to say things that other people may think and believe, but they don't have the courage to say or share. Mm -hmm. And because of that, after he got fired, after he got fired from the show in 2014, I think this was 2014. You guys don't fact check me, all right? Don't fact check me. But I think it was in 2014 he got fired from the show for making that comment. Then they bought him back 
with a $3 million paycheck annually. <laughs> and, hey, I like to say sometimes the game has been played, right? The game has been played. You, yeah. have to learn, you have to learn the secrets. But, you know, a lot of people, don't they don't capture that. But, you know, me and you, we, we're coaches, we're authors. All we do is we research speakers. We figure out what is it that helps these speakers. What, what helps a guy like Stephen Smith? How can he get paid $3 million for making a comment that says some females are provoking assaults on themselves? Well, let me just say that in the four categories of speakers, I'm not even going to comment on that. The four <laughs> categories of speakers, everyone should be informing you about something. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to persuade you to mm -hmm. come over to their side of the, oh, their side of this opinion poll. They're also going to entertain you in a way because they're all keeping you engaged. We want to we keep you to watch to the end of our chat this afternoon. Yeah. So we are entertaining you in a sense also. Matter of fact, if you're still here, go ahead and push like right now. If you're still here, let us know that you're still with us. Do that. Thank awesome. You. Hit like. Yep. The fourth category of speaker is the inspirational speaker. And many people also often say inspirational slash motivational. This one we're also very familiar with also, if you've ever gone to a church, any kind of church, mm -hmm. the minister is often an inspirational speaker. Mm -hmm. He's giving, he or she is giving you information about usually a higher being mm -hmm. or another way of thinking that's mm -hmm. going to help you become a better person. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the speaker that's going to inspire is going to find some way to make you feel motivated or mm -hmm. inspired to get out there and do better. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the some of my favorite inspirational speakers um, will be people like Lisa Nichols. Oh my goodness, yeah, Lisa you Nichols. You ever listen to her? You know what? I was on I was on her site recently. You know, because I had a, I had an opportunity was that last year or the year before to spend a day with Lisa Nichols. You know, and I'm on her site, and you know, once you get to, I'm, I, I like that you bought her up for inspirational. Because once I go to her website, one of the first things I see is it says, it says, inspire, lead, transform. Inspire, lead, transform. You know, one of the things I love about the inspirational speakers, kind of like what you said, is that the inspirational speaker's job is to provide their listener, their audience with the energy, the mm -hmm. insights, the emotion, and the hope for attaining some better outcome, some ideal outcome. She does a great job of that. She does a great job of that. You know, she's, I think she herself is in her 50s, you know, from Los Angeles, California. And often I listen to her stories of how she got her start and how back in, in her school days, some teacher told her that she should never speak. She's very inspirational. I think another guy, if, you were gonna, if we're going to talk about inspirational speakers, I don't think that conversation would be complete today without a discussion about Mr. Les Brown. You know, mm, yeah, I, I, I know. I know mostly everyone who, if you've ever heard of Les Brown, then you know Les Brown's an inspirational speaker. He's a very, he's a very stately speaker, very stately. He uses very great quotes. He has a great speaking voice, deep voice. He slows it down. Very educated. You know, I was listening to a, 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 something he said early, and he says, and I wish I could make his voice. He said that. We cannot help getting older, but some of us, we get older way before our time. And I wish I could go on and give the whole thing, but he's an inspirational speaker. You know, after listening to him, you feel inspired. You feel like your spirit has been lifted up. Yeah. You know, and I think in, in, in sharing that, one of the things we have to touch on is because you're right. When a lot of people, what you said earlier, a lot of people, when they think about inspirational speakers, sometimes they say inspirational slash motivational. And so often, Clients will ask me, they say, well, what's the difference? I just want to be a motivational speaker. And I say, well, you want to be a motivational speaker, you still have to figure out which of the four you want to be. Do you want to be a motivational speaker who's informative, persuasive, entertaining, or inspiring? And here's the difference. If you guys, if you're watching right now, go ahead and click like and grip, grip, whip out a, piece, a pen and paper because I'm going to tell you right now the difference between an inspirational speaker and a motivational speaker. Are you ready? Here's the difference between the motivational speaker and the inspirational speaker. You see, to motivate means to, to provide someone with an incentive to do something. 
So when you're motivating them, you're providing them with the the incentive, the encouragement. You know, so the persuasive speaker could be very motivational. The mm-hmm. entertaining speaker could be very motivational. But the inspirational speaker, the inspirational speaker does something that's just a little bit differently. The inspirational speaker kind of inspires, influences the mind. They lift the mind up and they lift you up almost as if they're breathing in some type of a spirit into you. They lift you up and want and make you want to mentally, physically do something. It's a little bit different from being motivated. Hmm. You said something when you were talking about Les Brown, you said, yeah, I wish I could do that voice. Mm-hmm. I just want to let everybody out there know that when we listen to other public speakers, we are Mm -hmm. learning from them and we are picking up hopefully their best traits and figuring out how to integrate that into our being. Mm -hmm. Never imitate. Awesome. I'm glad you said that. That is not a good way. And that, it's not. And, you know, Christine, one of the things I love is because, you know, we, we work with so many people and we observe so many speakers that we're constantly watching. And I know Les Brown. Les Brown has an awesome coaching program, a coaching program. There's another speaker that we didn't talk about today, Mr. Eric Thomas. But I love Eric Thomas. He's a he, he, I consider him more of an entertaining motivational speaker. Right. Mm-hmm. But he's very yah, yah, very out there, very rah, rah, very loud and passionate, you know. And he has a he has a great speaker speaker development program. And I always often I come across people who have been through their programs and they ask me to evaluate their presentation. And as soon as I'm sitting down in the audience, I'm sitting at and I did this back in two, 2015 with a gentleman down in Norfolk, Virginia. I went out and he was speaking to a large room. And the room was probably about three, 350 people. I'm sitting in the back listening to his presentation. And he had completed a Les Brown program. He didn't tell me this in advance. He didn't tell me this. He just wanted me to come out and evaluate his presentation because we were looking to work together. But I'm sitting in the back and, I'm, and my head's down for a second as I look at my piece of paper that I'm writing on. And it's almost as if I'm hearing a Les Brown mini me. As he walks across the stage, just like West Brest, Les Brown, he breathes and he presents in that stately manner. Mm-hmm. He utilizes a lot of the same quotes. I was like, wow, this guy would be a great Les Brown if anything ever happens to Les Brown. And we need a new Les Brown, you know. And then the reason I brought up Eric Thomas is because about a year and a half ago, I was working with a gentleman who had went through an Eric Thomas coaching program, and I listened to him speak, and I was like, "Wow! If anything ever happens to Eric Thomas, and they need a replacement for Eric Thomas, even though this guy doesn't look like Eric Thomas, he's not as built as Eric Thomas, he could definitely fit in and replace Eric Thomas." And so I said, that was great. I was like, you know, if, if your goal is to be Les Brown or Eric Thomas, you guys are going to be great. But if your goal is to be you and to be the best speaker that you can be and to be comfortable with yourself and share your own stories and share your best stories and really engage your audience in a way that's natural and comfortable to you, a way that's going to, you know, help you to get a Les Brown paycheck or an Eric Thomas paycheck, then you've got to be yourself. Absolutely. You've got to find your voice. You've got to be your own best speaker. Find your own voice and be yourself. Mm-hmm. Because everyone else is already taken. <laughs> You're right. They're already taken and they're doing a great job at it. You know, even though there's a whole lot of identity fraud going on, but these <laughs> yeah. folks are doing a good job of being themselves. And the, the world, I like to say, the world needs your story. We need your story. You've been through some things. You have some experiences. Your experiences, someone could hear it and it could change their life. Yes. So we gave you some food for thought. And next week, we're going to talk about content versus delivery. And I think what you heard today shows you the importance of delivery. Mm -hmm. Next week, content versus delivery. So come on back. Till next time, folks.